What's up, everybody? This is Rhonda Lynn with the Social Therapy Podcast, and we're back for another episode. What's up? Today is Sunday, and we are about to get it in. Now, your girl has been MIA for a couple of weeks, and I apologize for that, but I had COVID again. Can you believe it? It's like being in the workforce is rough, man. <laughs> for real. But I am healthy. I'm negative. I'm feeling great. And I am back on the scene. So look, so let's go ahead and get this party started. All right. So this week, we're going to change it up a little bit in the spirit of new year, new me, because you already know everybody's singing that same song, but I want to switch it up and do the look different this year. Okay. I'm going to tell you how to prepare for 2022 right so it's not all about uh new year's resolutions you know i mean once you get to a certain age you begin to realize that eh, that's probably not the right word to use because it's all mental right it's all psychological right having a new year's resolution is pressure i mean who else feels like that is pressure it's pressure okay so we're gonna change up the wording make it a little easier on your mental so that you, so that you're able to achieve the goals that you plan on achieving for the upcoming year okay now you already know though before we go any further i have got to give a shout out to our sponsor because they pay the bills around here okay so shout out to motivated coffee they got the best coffee on the internet it's rich it's warm it's flavorful it's smooth it's all that without creamer i'm trying to tell you check them out at motivatedcoffee.com all right so let's go ahead and get into it okay now one reason why i personally like the end of the year and the beginning of the year like this time of year right I wouldn't say that New Year's is my favorite holiday because, I mean, my birthday is on the 4th of July. I mean, (laughs) of course, right? For personal reasons, okay? But, honestly, I feel like everybody's birthday should be their favorite holiday because you are here making a difference in somebody's life, whether it just be your own, you know? Um, But I like this time of year because, for one, it's like you, you end the year out strong right this is a time where families come together people who may have um you know had an issue or whatever throughout the year will you know will at least tolerate each other for the family right um you know so you get a chance to mend relationships if there are some that need to be mended but I also like it because it's a time to prepare for new beginnings, right? So once you have, you know, you've gone through the previous year, 2021 is is over, right? I mean, as of the day that this episode is airing, 2021 is over, right? And you are able to have a time stamp, right, of setting a new beginning, for yourself okay doing this allows you to have the time to project and address where you are in your life and then also what inspires you right because 2020 2021 has been so different for so many of us you know like our whole lives and the way that we operate have changed You may have discovered parts of yourself, parts of your personality that you did not know you had, right? There are some people who thought they liked being around people all the time, and then they really realize they like their own company, you know? Um, But it gives you a chance to, you know, to project to the future as far as, like, what you want, you know, address where you are at with what you want out of your future, out of your life, you know, um... And then what is inspiring you to want those things, okay? So we're just going to go over uh, see, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven. We're going to go over like seven ways that 
you can prepare for 2022 for the upcoming year. Hopefully this list will, um, you know, answer some questions for you or at least be a lead into inspiring you to set your own goals for the next year or to make some changes or just whatever, right? Hopefully this will do it for you. So the first thing I want to I want to address is reset, okay? It's the end of the year. Um, the end of the year, you know, we're going to start 2021. We're going to hit the ground running. We're going to do the darn thing, right? We're going to do the damn thing, okay? So everything needs a reset at some point if you have been going hard all year and you have not been resting properly and you have been engaging with people and you have been fixing you fixing others or whatever it is if you're just going 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 all the time your body your mind needs a chance to hit the reset button so that you can be have that recharge You know what I'm saying? So the first thing I want you to do is understand and appreciate the value of sleep and rest. Okay? So depending on who you are and how you live your life, you know, there was one point in time where I could literally survive off of four hours of sleep at night and I was completely fine. I was completely refreshed. I was not tired and I was doing, I was living at my best, at my full potential, right? Now that I'm a little older, I need at least six or seven hours. Tops, like minimum, minimum six hours, you know? Even if it ends up getting broken up before the day is over, and the new day starts, I need to have gotten my rest, okay? You cannot, you cannot operate at full force on a half empty battery, you know? You have, you have to, you need your rest, okay? Um, speaking of rest, rest doesn't always equal sleep, Okay? It could be watching your favorite TV show. It could be, you know, listening to a podcast. It could be writing in your journal. You know, it could just be really anything that does not relate to what you do in the world every day. Something that does not relate to your responsibilities as a person in the world every day. It allows your mind to you know, drift off to expand and allows your mind to be creative. You know, it allows your mind to, you know, not, you know, use, that's the way I want to say it. Like, it allows your mind to like, you know, take a break from that. I mean, our minds are always going. You don't want, or you don't want your brain to shut down. Okay, let's make that clear. But you do want to give it the opportunity to use different parts of your brain to keep that muscle strong, right? You know, I um, I was listening to, was it a podcast? Oh, I know, I don't know. Because, I mean, I would really like to give credit to whoever said this, but I don't know who it was. And this was like a couple of years ago, so whatever. But, you know, it's like, you know how they say, like, um, a body in motion stays in motion, right? So, like, if you are stretching, if you are working out, if you are a runner or whatever, you had to keep your body moving so it don't get stiff, you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't start to break down so that you don't start to, you know, have the aches and pains beyond a level that you should be having at the age that you are at you know I mean because we really like we at this age right now like these late 30s baby okay they didn't tell me about this they they didn't tell me you know um yeah (laughs) they tell you about this you know so I mean my mom told me when I was younger she was like you know if you want to stay in shape you got to get in shape and then stay in shape. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait until you're in your late 30s, your 40s, your 50s to decide, oh, now I want to have the best body of my life. Now I want to hit the gym every day. It's harder to get in shape than it is to stay in shape, right? 
So I said that to say this. When I talk about resetting and getting sleep and getting rest and allowing your brain to, you know, uh, to rest in some areas while focusing on other areas, if you want to keep that muscle strong, if you want to keep your mind strong, you have got to read, okay? You have got to uh, partake in some type of art, okay? You have got to use parts of your brain that feed other parts of your brain. Does that make sense? Like, if you read, I know there's different personalities out there. I've been learning recently that, um, you know, some people read differently, right? Like, for example... When I read, I can hear my voice. I can, I can, like, envision the scenario as I'm reading it. And then there's some people that say they can't do that, you know. But at the end of the day, we all read the same book. We all know what it said. So, but if you read, whatever it is that you read, right, whether it be self-help, whether it be fantasy, whether it be, you know, uh, mystery novels, whatever, right, Uh, biographies, whatever, you are um, strengthening all these different areas of your brain, you're strengthening the ability for it to, like, work out situations, like, if you're reading a, a, a murder mystery, and you're trying to, you know, figure out what happened to so and so now, you know, and who did it, and who really, you know, who hated who, and how does that line up, and it's like, while you're reading the book, you also trying to calculate in your mind the different scenarios, and how this person felt about that person, and how that could have played out, or who could have done it, and why they would have done it, and you're thinking about all this stuff while you're reading this book that is giving you clues, you know what I'm saying, so you're not just reading you are using different parts of your brain in a relaxed state. Now, it helps to read about stuff you like, to read about stuff you enjoy, okay? So, I'm going to tell you right now, if you are, you know, if you're not into murder mystery, you're not going to enjoy reading murder mystery. You know what I'm saying? If you're not into uh, science a science book is going to put you to sleep. You're not going to be able to get through it. You know, whatever it is that you're into, whether it be crafting, whether it be math or health or whatever it is that you're into, start reading about it. And not only will you, um, you know, allow your brain to work that muscle and keep it strong and keep it able to be sharp in older age, but you will also have knowledge. You will have conversation starters, conversation finishers. You'll be able to have something to contribute to the conversation. So when you are at a dinner party or if you are networking or you're meeting new people or you're, you know, people are introducing you, hey, this is my sister so-and-so, da 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 you know, and somebody says something and you know something about it, What? You want to be the one that knows. You don't never want to be the person that doesn't know. Okay? Because we all know how people are. They will disregard you quick. Mm-hmm. They will. So, the first one was uh, reset. Okay? That's what we were talking about. The next thing we are going to go over, right? The next tip for preparing for 2022 is review, okay? Like, how can you prepare for anything if you don't even know what you did, okay? Now, if you journal, if you are a journaler, you know, this would be the perfect time to go over some of your journal entries from last year. And then, like, you can see your growth. You can see your growth from the beginning of the year to where you are now. You know, you can make little notes about maybe how something turned out that you wrote about several months ago or whatever, or based off of that situation and what you learned from it, you know, and you know what you would do differently. So it's like taking the time to review journal entries from the previous year is it can be like very motivating, you know, to let you know you're on the right track who you are 
because sometimes we get so caught up in thinking that we are not doing enough or we are not focused enough or you know you're I have not made any progress I am in the same place that I was at last year are you though are you you know if you start if you start if you're not a journaler start being a journaler okay if you go through your notes, you can see your progress. You can see the decisions that you've made. You can go through your calendar and see the things that you've done throughout the year and what you have accomplished. Because a lot of times that stuff, we forget about it, right? We forget about the fact that we have achieved growth and how we handle people, how we handle situations, you know what I'm saying? How we perform at our job, you know what I'm saying? How we have grown as a parent as a family member, as a sister, mother, daughter, cousin, whatever. You know what I'm saying? As a friend, you know? We don't realize, you know, I I did this for this person, you know? And I didn't expect a pat on the back, but I'm gonna pat myself on the back because I know the version of me before would have never, okay? So, review your notes so you can, so you can, see read that book of yourself book of self okay um once you've taken a look back at where you're coming from it'll also allow you to recognize what areas of your life are going well and which areas need a little bit of extra attention okay like you're doing great. You're doing wonderful. You know what I'm saying? And you achieved this. You did that. And you're proud of this. And I'm proud of that. And blah, blah, blah. But then we don't want to glance over a few shortcomings. Maybe a few goals we didn't reach. A few areas we self-sabotage. You know what I'm saying? You know, we don't want to look at. We don't want to gloss over that. Address that head on. Put that on your list of goals for the year. Okay. Give those areas extra attention moving forward because apparently those are areas that you have not been very focused in and they fell by the wayside, right? So now you need to bring those areas up to the forefront of your of your attention, right? Of your focus and give it the attention that it needs in order for you to, to correct it. Okay, so here's a few prompts you can ask yourself. Okay, if you want to get started on your review, right? You can ask yourself, What am I proud of? What did I do last year that I am proud of? Right? What is something that I did that I didn't think I could do? Okay, um, you can write down the areas of your life that you See the most improvement in okay what what is it about me that I have improved in the most okay um this is you know this is a reflection of yourself okay because let me let, let me let me be clear about something real quick okay I'm not saying that everybody is like this but it's not about what nobody else think okay it's not about um, what a, what anyone else thinks that you've done. Nobody sees a grind. Nobody sees a work that you put in when nobody's looking. Okay? They just see what you do on the outside at the time they happen to scroll by it on your Instagram. You feel me? So you gotta you gotta you gotta take a look at this stuff yourself because you know your personal struggles, you know how far you've come, you know how hard it is for you to, you know, stay up till four in the morning, shipping out packages and answering emails when you got to be at work at eight o'clock in the morning and you're still trying to get a workout in before you get ready for work. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, those areas, you know, those struggles, but does anybody else, does anybody else? No, because it ain't their business. Okay. And that's not something you go broadcasting to everybody. Some people do, but for what? Why? You want a cookie? You're supposed to be doing it. Okay, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? 
But give yourself a cookie, okay? Promote yourself, okay? Congratulate yourself for doing that stuff, okay? Once you identify the areas that you have improved in the most, now, once again, you want to identify what areas are you struggling with. See, people think that you journal throughout the year just as an activity to do, right? Um, It's like you journal and you never look at it again. That's not what it's about, okay? It should be tied to another action, okay? Because everything that we do should serve a purpose in our life, right? So if you're journaling every day, the purpose of the journaling is to review your journal so often, every so often and identify areas of improvement, identify areas of struggle, that need extra attention so you can start to focus on those things to make sure that you are on your A game and that you are coming at the world with your best self. If we're not taking constant stock of ourselves, then we start falling off. You know, we start letting things slide. We start, you know, you if you're a forgetful person, you might forget to do a few things. You know, we got to constantly revisit this stuff. Okay, you're not just doing it so you can say, oh, I journal. No, review your journal. Okay, check yourself. You know, for real. Then, another question, another prompt, right, is uh, what's important to me, right? Identify the things in your life that are the most important to you okay and this could be anything this is your own personal journal you know and um try not to think of like what if somebody found my journal and read it it's not don't think about that okay this is a personal journal okay if you have those kind of issues I suggest you get you a safe or something okay because um this is your journal is supposed to be a safe space right it is um if you are in a situation where you feel like somebody might read the journal. I mean, I know what that's like. I've been there. I've had my journal read without my permission. And at that point, it's just like, it is what it is. This is me, you know? But um, if you don't have that type of, if you're not there yet, you know, then yeah, you might want to, I don't know, journal in your phone, you know what I'm saying? There's a few uh, digital, you know, journaling apps that you can find in the Play Store or on the Apple i on the Apple store, whatever. Um, or, you know, just put it up, you know, we all know how to hide stuff. You know, I can tell you one thing when my son was younger, you know, my favorite candy was turtles and I knew where to put it where he could never find it. I'm just saying, you know, it was always there when I got ready for it. Um, so yeah, write out what's important to you. And it could be anything. It could be, you know, something that, that you might, think it's silly to write down like maybe like maybe being able to say you know having a bowl of ice cream on the first Sunday of every month is important to me because that lets me know that I made it through last month and I'm celebrating my achievements from the previous month you know what I'm saying so being able to sit down watch a tv show you know and eat a bowl of ice cream is important to me right so it doesn't have to be something big you know it can be the smallest little thing that doesn't even make sense to nobody but you but this is your journal you're writing to yourself okay so write that out okay and then the is this the last prompt I want for yeah okay um the last prompt I want to put give you for the review section of um how to prepare for 2022 is ask yourself are my actions aligned with what's important to me okay so you ask yourself what's important to me now that you know now that you have identified what's important to you now you have to analyze are my actions aligned with what's important to me if I say being a mom 
is the most important thing to me. Are my actions aligned with someone that does my actions look like someone who feels like being a mom is the most important thing to you? You know, do you act like somebody who being a mother is the most important part of your life? You know, if being an entrepreneur is something that is important to you, are you acting like someone who wants to be a successful entrepreneur? Right? I mean, what is important to you? You know, is that bowl of ice cream that important to you? Celebrating your, uh, what you want, uh, what you achieved the month before, you know, so you can have that bowl of ice cream because you know you lactose intolerant, so you don't suffer for it, but it tastes so good. That's why you only do it once a month. It's celebration. You know, you suffer later. Okay. Um, but the month leading up to that bowl of ice cream, are you focused? Are you achieving your goals? Are you making things happen? Are you shaking things up? So you can earn that bowl of ice cream? Are you? Or are you just having a bowl of ice cream and you don't even know what you celebrate? That's what that's that's something to ask yourself, right? So, are your actions aligned with what's important to you? Okay. The next prompt for how to prepare for 2022. I'm going to pick a word <laughs> before this podcast is over. It's a prompt. It's a question. It's not. Right? The next bullet point. There we go. Is goal setting, right? So, you know, like I said, we're not, um, we not doing this uh, New Year's resolution you know what i'm saying like i don't I, look here the word resolution is it's so scary like I, you know, you've been saying new year's resolution new year new me woo 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 for the last 20 years last 20 years okay the last 25 the last 30 years and then you are doing decent not even good. You're doing decent for like a week and then you fall off. There's some people who said, okay, January 1st, I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm going to stop eating meat. And then it's like, I'm going to wait till Monday. you already falling off. You don't even trust yourself. You can't even keep a promise to yourself. What's up with that, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to work on goal setting, okay? So it's like when you have a job, most jobs, not all of them. You know, I worked at a Fortune 500 company for over 10 years. And at the beginning of the year, we had we had to set our goals. And, um, you know, then we, we revisit those goals throughout the year. And you have them posted somewhere to keep you on track, to remind you what you have to, what you should be doing or achieving because you're going to end up having a one-on-one with your manager. You the manager, okay? And don't be giving yourself that much slack, Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to set three goals for your personal life, three goals for your finances, right? Your income and three goals for your social life. Okay. I mean, this is the social therapy podcast. We help when you get social out here. We help when you be a better version of yourself socially. Okay. And how can you be um, a better version of yourself socially if y'all never be social? How, how, how? Okay, so set three goals for your personal life, for your financial life, and for your social life, okay? While you're doing this, I want you to set clear and achievable goals, okay? So for example, let's say for your finances, you want to have 10, you you say, oh, I want a savings. Um, I want a savings account for my, uh, for emergency, right? So I'm gonna set up an emergency fund, okay? You can't just leave that right there. That's the header. Okay. Okay. You want to set up a savings account for your emergency fund. How much money do you need in an emergency fund? Okay. Because, you know, this emergency fund is like car repairs. It is uh, your kid needing, you know, your kids having a, something happening. I don't want to put that on nobody. But your kids, you know, the kids to do stuff. You know what I'm saying? Your rent, you know, COVID might hit. You might not, you might get laid off your job and your unemployment might not start for a couple of months because of so many people signing up. You know, that just happened. And I you got your little savings, but you still paying your bills and you ain't missing a beat, baby, okay? How much money does it take for you to have a savings for six months? Do the math, 
okay? Or just flat out say, you know what? I want $10,000 in my savings account by the end of 2022. That is a clear goal. Now, is it achievable? Depending on how much you make, if you have a side hustle or not, it might not be achievable or it might be. You might have the type of income when you say, you know what? I can put, you know, I can put X amount of dollars up a week, every paycheck, every month, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll have $10,000. Like, once you set the goal, make sure it's achievable, and then exactly how you're going to do it. If you leave the goal too gray, you will not achieve it because you don't have it outlined on what to do. You don't know what to do. You are flying by the seat of your pants. Every day. Every day is a new way you're going to do it. Every day is a new idea of how you're going to put $10,000 in your account by the end of the year. No, you need to make it official. I want $10,000 in my account by the end of the year. This is how I'm going to do it. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is how much it's going to be. No, 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 no. Right? And when you have that outline like that, you are you can focus in on that one thing and over time it will come into fruition right because you when you're switching up too much you're not focused on anything right you can't master anything that you when you switch up too much okay and i know that personally trust me i do and that's why i'm able to tell you this stuff okay So while setting your goals, I want you to make room for your dreams, okay? Set achievable goals with a, let me see, I got these notes written here. (laughs) Okay, I want you to make room for your dreams, okay? It's hard to achieve your goals when you have a cluttered mind and a cluttered life, okay? And what I mean by that is, you know, let's go back to the $10,000, right? Let's say you say, okay, I want to have $10,000 in my emergency savings fund by the end of 2022, okay? Um, But you got so many different things going on that you never really make room to save the money, like... What is it like? Let's see, a thousand dollars a month would be twelve thousand. So maybe it's like eight hundred a month. I don't know, right? But let's just say, let's just say it's eight hundred a month, right? Um, I don't really think it's eight hundred a month, but this is just just to make life easy, because I don't feel like doing the math. Um, so let's say it's eight hundred dollars a month, okay? And maybe you don't really have the time or the space in your life to pick up a second job or to pick up a new side hustle or to create a stream of income that you don't already have but you can you know cancel some subscriptions that you don't use you know what I'm saying you can you know find money in er in other areas that you don't already um that you're not really utilizing you know you can set up an automatic Uh, funds transfer from your check into your savings, you know, so that that money that you need to save out of every paycheck, out of every month goes in there without you having to physically do it, you know, so you're making room in your life to achieve a goal that you want, okay, and sometimes the easiest way to do that, especially when you have such a busy life, is to make things take care of themselves, right, so if you need to put $800 up every month in order to get ten thousand dollars a month this is really bothering me right now (laughs) let me see this is really bothering me right now i don't know i'm just gonna say twelve thousand forget that okay so i'm using my phone still because my laptop is still down i can't use my calculator okay so if it's twelve thousand dollars for your savings and you put a thousand dollars up every month you have twelve thousand dollars by the end of the year in your emergency savings so if you know that you need a thousand dollars to go into your savings every month, the easiest way to do that, so you don't accidentally dip in it, so you don't accidentally 
you know, forget to put the money in there and now it's coming to the end of the year and you're coming up short, okay, is, you know, let it do it itself. Let it transfer itself, you know. Let it, um, let that, let it build itself. And if you're using a high interest yielding savings account, or even if you're putting it in a, into like, you know, a stock portfolio or something like that, the interest that you get off of it could help you get to your $12,000 even quicker than just having to save the whole thing out of your own income, right? So there's different ways to achieve, you know, your goals that you want to set. Just make sure you're making room for your dreams to come true. You know, a lot of people are dreamers and it's they want this life, but they aren't doing anything and they're not making room for that life to happen. You know, if you, you know, if you want to start a business selling candles, but you don't have time to make candles. So what do you need to take time to order candles? You know, you need to make time to do, you know, shows, you know, people, they can't buy yourself if they don't know you exist. You say, um, has anyone, has anyone noticed that they've become more introverted because of the pandemic, right? Like, I know there's a lot of people that feel like they were extroverted or they like being around people or they enjoy the company of others. And then with the pandemic, it just seems like a lot of people are enjoying their own company more, you know? Um, I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty introverted myself. Uh, but I'm also like, my personality is very inviting. So, you know, once I go somewhere and I start talking, people do, you know, do gravitate to me. Um, but I have noticed that since the pandemic started, that I do enjoy being at home, enjoying myself a lot more. You know, I started baking, I started you know, trying new recipes, um, getting caught up on my rest and my sleep, and just doing a lot of self-care as far as like meditating and manifesting, having a morning routine, and just making sure that I'm taking care of myself and giving myself self-love and self-care. You know, by the time I get done doing all that, it's day away, you know? <laughs> but I don't know. That's just something that's been on my mind. I wanted to ask, you know, if anybody agrees or not, if you want to share how you have or have not, you know, let me know leave it in a comment or something let's start a conversation go over to the facebook group and you know tell us what you think okay uh so speaking of uh that twelve thousand dollars saving we're on a budget for 2022 right the next bullet point is budget okay so there should be some kind of financial goal for the upcoming year even if you already a millionaire even if you already make six figures a year, okay? You, there's always an opportunity somewhere for something for you to do, okay? So, set, is there a financial goal for the upcoming year? And then based off of what that goal is, set a budget for yourself and um, establish a savings to reach that goal. You know, I mean, it could be buying a new couch, You know, maybe it's time for you to get a new couch or a new mattress. And you know, it's like, you don't want, you don't, you don't want a cheap mattress. You want a good mattress. You know what I'm saying? You want a good mattress. Some, a mattress that you say, you know what? I'm going to have to put some money to the side for this. That's a financial goal, right? It's a savings, you know? So, you know, establish a savings for whatever it is that you're trying to reach. And then, um reach that goal and then buy what it is or take care of whatever it is that that goal was set for I also believe that you should have four bank accounts right Um, and I'm going to tell you why so if you have all of your bills coming out of one account plus all of your personal adventures plus all of your subscriptions you know you could end up in a pickle right so let's say you got your subscriptions coming out you got your uh you know, your netflix your hulu your uh a couple of um apps from the app store you know what i'm saying your gym membership you know you got like all these different things coming out of the same account that you pay your bills out of and then let's say there's a problem one day let's say 
they double charge you. Let's say you make a purchase. Prime example, right? I bought my son an Apple Mac, a, a MacBook. I don't think it was the air. A couple months ago, right? For school. And, um, I, you know, he was out of state for um, his, you know, whatever it is that he does. And um, I had to buy it online and have him pick it up at the Best Buy in the state that he was in, right? So initially I purchased it and it's the weirdest thing. Like I purchased it and I put in the city, the state that he was in, um, you know, then they came up with like a list of like three locations. I chose the store number that was closest to him based off of what he told me, right? And then when I checked out, it automatically went off of my current location, right? And then it set up for for the laptop he picked up at a Best Buy near me, where I was, which is nowhere near where he was right so then I tried to change it they couldn't change it I had to call on the phone the lady was like yeah well you know we could change it we'll change the pickup location to that one you know blah blah and then when she did that luckily like I said I have four accounts right and I have one for purchases like this right and that account normally don't really have no money in it I would transfer money into that account to buy these type of purchases um just for a safe guardian and I'm so glad I did that, right? So um, I used this account to buy my son's laptop from Best Buy. And when she changed the store location for the pickup, it tried to charge me again. And then I got a notification that says, your purchase cannot be completed because like funds are not available or something like that. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Like I got the receipt number and everything. Y'all didn't already took this money, okay? And, um, you know, I was on the phone with customer service a couple of times. They worked it out. But you know what? If that money had it came out of my bill account, who knows how long it would have took them to rectify the double charge? How long does it take for them to give me my money back? Right. Meanwhile, now it's affecting other other areas of my life. Right. If I had that money coming out of the account I use for the important responsibilities that I have in my life, right? Um, So you need an account for bills. You need an account for personal use, for your savings, and for your emergency savings, right? And that's two different things. Like your emergency savings, like we went over before, you know what I'm saying? It's a pandemic. You know, you might have to start paying rent out of your emergency savings. You, You might have to buy new tires for your car. You know, you might have to do anything anything can happen you could be ready for it it's nothing it's no worse feeling than to have a financial burden on you that you can't afford to take care of and once you've gone through that enough times you will make sure that you never have to go through it again right um your regular savings is your money for you know um for whatever you want to save up for whether it be a trip or just for cushion so you can know that you got money it's not it's not for emergency purposes but you know it's just extra money you know whatever you want to delegate it for and then personal use is you know your subscriptions you know um paying for the grocery store going to you know buy toiletries stuff like that you know personal use right and then your bills, you know, and I, honestly, I feel like if you have all of those categories set up for your bank accounts, that will help uh, relieve a lot of tension in your financial world. OK, because um, everybody not that responsible and it ain't even on you half the time. I mean, sometimes it's just on the company who took who charged you twice. Right. They're not. And a lot of times I don't like to give your money back. You know, if if one of these of Hulu or Netflix or whatever, you know, if your phone company, you know, saying they double charge you, they want to give you a credit towards the next month. They don't want to give you your money back. But if the money's not there for them to even take, then there's no mishap. So you got to think about that. Um, The next bullet point for preparing for 2022 is realign. Okay. So a few ways you can realign your 
uh, your inner self, right? Because you just think about all the things that you've been through through 2021. You've been through a lot. Even if you didn't personally have COVID or if you didn't personally experience a hardship because of the pandemic, just knowing that it's happening right outside your door, just knowing that you work with people or you're related to people or you know people. Um, this is okay. Um, that are going through, you know, situations related to the pandemic, it affects you externally. Those external factors can affect you internally, even though it's not happening to you, you are still getting like, like secondhand smoke, basically off somebody else's situation. Anytime somebody tells you about what they're going through, you you get you you get a little bit of that in you like have you ever felt like talking to somebody and then you feel so exhausted afterward? That's why cuz you're taking some of their energy, right? It's a transfer of energy. They are transferring some of their energy to you. And they might feel better after talking to you. And they feel better because they transfer some of that energy to you. And now you are walking around feeling low. Okay. So, and after going through that for months and months or the last couple of years or whatever, it's like, you got to realign, you got to get centered. You got to make sure you are right to step into the upcoming year and rock it out. Okay. So we're going to, so much you can realign is uh, reading right we talked about that earlier praying you know so whatever your religion is i'm christian so you know i pray to god you know yeshua whatever um i hate to say whatever but he we got we good okay um but pray you know praying uh fasting you know uh i don't know about you but i know that anytime i fast i get clarity right it's amazing it's like you know giving up something that is hard to give up that my body craves that my body needs right um it declutters my aura right it declutters my mind it makes me more open to receive what it is that i need in order to um realign my mind right and then you know while you're in realignment and you're meditating or whatever um be clear about what you need right be clear about what you need to be okay um the next bullet point for preparing for 2022 is manifestation i know a lot of people like such people look at that like it's a like it's a dirty word but it's not i mean we manifest things every day we manifest our paycheck every week okay let me tell you something because these jobs, hmm, chill, let me tell you something, okay? I've worked a job where I went to work every day and didn't get my check, and it was a problem, okay? But <laughs> it was a problem. Um, but when you clock in every week and work your 40 plus hours or whatever many hours you want, you know you're going to get paid on Friday, right? And you believe that you're going to get paid. Your actions reflect as someone who believes they're going to get their paycheck on Friday, you manifest that paycheck every week. And, you, and you're moving and you're thinking in a way of someone who knows what they're going to receive. It's the same thing, right? But one way you can manifest um, something I've been, I'm a, I've am ai been an imaginative person my whole life anyway, even as a child. But um, something that I learned, recently learned that has a name for it is called Mind movies okay so check this out um when you manifest using mind movies you imagine the life that you really want and you see yourself actively living it right so let's say you want a new car okay let's say you want a new uh, mercedes benz 2022 mercedes benz gle them are nice right and you manifest, you do mind movies, you imagine yourself in this car, washing this car, putting gas in this car, or charging this car up, or whatever it is that you got to do, right? You see yourself actively living in it, and 
you start moving, you will start to subconsciously move in ways that prepare you to achieve whatever states, whatever status you need in order to get that car. So whether that means that you need to raise your credit score, whether that means you need uh, to save up a little bit more for a down payment so you can have the payments that you want or whatever, or whatever it is that you need to do to get into position to get the car that you want by manifesting it, by doing mind movies, by writing it down, by speaking it into existence, your mind, you are feeding your mind. Uh, it's like your mind is like a computer, right? So you're feeding into your mind what you want it to do. And then your mind dictates to the rest of your mind and your body what to do in order to receive that thing. Okay? And this is why I believe in manifestation. Because it's it takes work, though. You're not going to manifest just by saying, oh, I want this car. No. You say it enough times. You see it enough times. You, you feel it enough times. You're going to start making moves that push you into position to have what it is that you want and what you desire. Okay. Uh, The last thing I want to talk about is commit. Okay. The last bullet point of tonight is commit. Okay. So the way that I say you should commit is pen to paper. Okay. Write it down. Okay. Write it down on paper or whatever your goals are, whatever you want to manifest, whatever it is that you need, your budget, whatever. Right. It's one thing to think it, but pen the paper right and then after you write it down speak it out loud you know make that a permanent memory in your mind right script it into your thoughts okay now depending on what it is you could tell a friend tell somebody that can hold you accountable right so if you say you're going to work out tell somebody somebody that can help hold you accountable to hitting the gym okay create entries on your calendar throughout the year as checkpoints, right? So maybe once every three months, every quarter, you have a a timer or a date or a calendar entry that pops up on your phone that says, you know, review the last 90 days, you know? Where are you at? Are you where you're supposed to be with the goals that you set for yourself, okay? And then if you're new to journaling, I would say start out with one sentence journal entries, right? Every day, write one sentence about your day. And what you will notice is that the more you just start doing one sentence, you'll start writing more and more and more. And then by the end of the year, you will build up to having full pages of journal entries. But if you're new to this, just start out with one sentence. Maybe just ask yourself, you know, how was my day? You know, saying summarize your day in one sentence, you know, and then you just start from there and start building up from it. Okay. And then. I want you to plan out your year. So, um, like I said, I worked at a Fortune 500 company for over 10 years. Every year, um, we had to set our SMART goals, and we, uh, which were strategic, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound, right? So when you set your goals, what's the strategy, right? Is it a measurable goal, okay? Your goal is $12,000 in your savings account. That is measurable. The strategy, how you're going to... um, how you're going to save it. Is that attainable based off of the income that you have right now? Is that something you can actually do? Which means, is it realistic? Can you realistically save $12,000 by the end of the year for your emergency fund? Or is it something that you need to pick up another stream of income to make it attainable, right? And then time bound, you gave yourself 12 months, right? This is day one, January day one. You have until December 31st of 2022 to have $12,000 in your savings account, right? That is time bound, okay? Because one thing I want you to realize is your life is your business. And these businesses are successful because they do things like this. This is how they keep themselves on track. This is how they, you know, uh, make sure they achieve milestones within their business and they continue to grow in the right direction. And if you want to be able to grow in the right direction, you have to start taking some of these strategies from these businesses on how they operate and implement that into your own life until you can figure out how to switch it up a little bit you know saying you just figure out how to mimic these strategies from these larger companies in order to build a successful life business okay because your life 
is your business, okay? And that is it for this week, you guys. Thank you so much for listening in. If you made it to the end of this podcast, I know it was a lot of information. And look, don't feel bad if you had to pause and come back. It's a lot, but I hope you took notes, okay? Make sure that you uh, follow us on, um, make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. (laughs) Make sure that you subscribe to this um, podcast on your favorite listening platform. And that you share this episode with somebody that you know could use this information. And until next week, you guys, peace. I hope you guys have a wonderful start to your year. It's been so great podcasting with you guys. If you have any suggestions or topics that you would like to talk about, let me know. And if you want to get on here and talk with me, let's have a conversation. I am open to having a guest host right switch it up from not just my perspective but other people so um we're going to talk about that more but and don't forget to ch- head over to motivated coffee and get your daily motivation in a cup and until next week 